Thank you. The beautiful girl. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Malala Yousafzai and Ziauddin, welcome to the 92nd Street Y here in New York. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you very much. You have obviously a riveting story and everybody here can't wait to hear from you. I want to know first, and I'm sure everybody wants to know, what is your impression of New York City? You come from a village in the Swat Valley. This must be amazing. Uh, I'm enjoying here, and I think it's good to come here and visit New York only for two, three days. And <laughs> I know it's hard to live here because it's a busy city, and uh, sometimes I call it developed Karachi. <laughs> developed Karachi, nice yeah. one. <laughs> so, yeah, because many people are living here, there's rush, traffic, horns, and we came from UK, and to be honest, you cannot hear a horn in UK. So I was not expecting such horns and Russian traffic yeah. in New York, but still we are human beings. Yeah. This is one of the greatest cities in the world, but everybody knows about the honking here in New York City <laughs> and the beautiful skyscrapers. Exactly. Let me take you back to that incredible day a year ago. Do you remember, Malala, what happened to you on that bus when somebody asked your friends, who is Malala? I don't remember what happened on that day when that man came, we may call him a boy. There were, there were two guys on that day. And usually there are many people on that road and like we are just living at that Usually, like, it's a normal life. But on that day, there were only two boys. And they stopped our school bus. And the driver, Usman Bhaijan, he was thinking that they might be asking any question, asking about their sister. And that one boy was talking to the driver. And the, another boy, he came at the back. And he was just as near to me as, uh, maybe you are quite far away. But he was very near to me. And he asked, who is Malala? All the girls, they got furious. No one could understand what he's saying because we were thinking about our next day exam paper. And on that day, we were having a gossip who, got, who would get the high marks, who would get the lower marks. And we had, like, the, the, we were sad on that day because we said, I got less marks and she got high marks in the exam. So we were not expecting that we are not going back home. Even I was not expecting that the journey that I have started to go back home will end up in a hospital in Birmingham. So he asked, who is Malala? He did not give me time to answer his question. And my friend told me, my best friend Muniba, that at that time you just squeezed my hand, you just pushed it with force, and you did not say anything. And then in the next few seconds, he fired three bullets. One bullet uh, hit me the left side of my forehead, just above here, and it went down through my neck and into my shoulder. And I think I was hit uh, by only one bullet, and it also affected my eardrum, uh, so now I have a problem in listening as well. It also uh, cut down my facial nerve. But still, if I look at it, it's a miracle. My brain is saved, my spinal cord is saved, Everything is fine. I am alive, and I still can talk. I can smile. So I thank God for that. And uh, my two other friends, Kainat and Shazia, they were also shot in their shoulders. So when I heard that Shazia and Kainat were also shot with me, that was a really sad news for me. Because <laughs> if I was shot, that was fine for me. But I, I was then feeling guilty that why they have been the target. So it was really sad for me to hear. Your father has been so close to you all your life. It must be still so difficult for you to listen to the retelling of this story. Uh, yes, of course. Uh, you see, that was the hardest moment for me as a father when I heard the news about attack on her. And it was such a brutal attack that 
it has almost taken her life. And uh, we had the worst trauma. And even to think of it, it's very difficult. Because in this universe, she's the most precious person for me in my life. And we are not only father and daughter, we are friends. We are the fellows of a car one that is for peace, that is for education. And to lose such a friend, it's really very difficult. But thanks to God that she's alive and she stands tall physically, mentally, and spiritually. Let me ask you, Ziauddin, because you have brought up your daughter in very conservative Pakistan.